white horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high of silver, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> His faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Oh, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Are you still there? Away! When Deputy Pete McCool captured Knife Jackson and brought him to the jail in the town of Unity, the killer bragged that iron bars couldn't hold him. The night following his conviction, Deputy McCool was in the jail guarding the prisoner. Outside the building, a boy from the Unity Hotel was approaching with food. The boy didn't see the two men who moved toward him in the darkness. But suddenly, a gun barrel hit his head. He fell to the ground unconscious. The man who had struck him turned to his partner and said, All right, Dovey. Now we'll go to the jail. I'm with you, Rich. A few seconds later, Ricks Roscoe and Adobe Spicer knocked on the door of the jail. Who's there? Food for the prisoner. Just a minute. I'll unlock the door. Get your gun ready, Adobe. I'm said, Ricks. Should I let him have it when he opens the door? No, not unless you have to. No use letting the whole town know there's a jailbreak. All right, Slim. Come on in, Sahib. Nice your hands. What? Get him up. Why? Back away from the door, deputy. Don't try any fast moves. What's the idea? You'll find out. Where's your prisoner? Right here, boys. Hi there, Knife. All right, deputy. Unlock that cell. Oh, so it's a jailbreak. Yes, a jailbreak. Now get the keys for that cell and be quick about it. All right. Uh, look out, Rich. He's going for his gun. Well, good for you, Rich. Tapping his head with your gun barrel, keep him quiet. Too bad you didn't shoot him. We don't want gunplay. He'll not make trouble now, Knife. The keys to the cell are in the desk, boys. Yeah, I'll get him. Good thing you came for me tonight. Tomorrow morning, the sheriff's supposed to take me to territorial prison. And so we heard. How do you know about it? We were in court today when you were sentenced. I have the keys. My gun's in there, too, Doby. Yeah, I see it. I'll get it for you. I'll be doggone glad to get out of here. Have a score to settle with Deputy McCool. It was his idea to put this ball and chain around my ankle. Ball and chain? <clears throat> well, don't worry, Knife. When you're out of the cell, I'll get that iron strap off your ankle. You can't, Doby. Why not? There's only one key to fit it, and the sheriff's got it with him. Uh, that's bad. I'll not be able to ride a horse. <laughs> We'd better get a wagon for you. Yeah, I saw a two-horse wagon at the hitch rail in front of the general store. Tried to bring it to the back door of the jail without being seen. All right. Uh, Where'd you two leave your own horses? In back of the jail. They're all set to travel. Yeah, here's your gun. Yeah, I'll use it to blow that deputy's head off. Oh, hold it. Huh? You want to bring the whole town here? Oh, no. Gun plays out. 
We'll shoot if necessary to make a getaway. You can't let that law dog live. He's seen you and Rex. He'll identify you. Posses will be out looking for us as soon as the break's discovered. Yeah, that's so. We've got to fix it so McCool can't talk. All right. We'll take him with us. I'll tie and gag him while he's unconscious. When Rex gets here with the wagon, you drive it. We'll throw McCool in the back, get our horses, and follow you out of town. The fugitive, his two friends, and the captured deputy traveled all night. Lying on the floor of the wagon, McCool struggled to loosen the ropes around his wrists. At daybreak, they halted in the woods. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Rick's helped knife from the wagon while Adobe unhitched the horses. Uh, this blasted hole, I've got to get rid of it somehow. Take it easy, knife. Easy? How'd you like to be chained to a dead weight? I've got to get free of it. i got a file in my saddlebag. I'll use it on that chain. Uh, it'll take a long time to file through What's it. the difference? We'll be here all day. Now sit down here, knife. Uh, I don't know why you two are so set on traveling by night. The law has nothing on Adobe and me. We want to keep it that way. Oh, afraid to be seen with me. We huh? took a big chance when we broke you out of jail. If you're recaptured, we're likely to go to Territorial for helping you escape. Yeah, he's right, Matt. You two have killed and robbed as many men as I have. The law, the law be... doesn't know anything about us. You see, we've never been loco enough to leave witnesses to identify us. There's one witness who will identify you. Who? Deputy McCool. We're a long way from unity now. Let's get rid of them. Not yet. Why not? If you shoot them here, the body's sure to be found. Well, what about it? If there's no body, there's no murder. Tomorrow, we'll be traveling along the rim of a canyon above Thief River. That's where we'll let them have it. Good idea, Dobie. We'll toss the body into the river. Right. Uh, all right, boys. If that's the way you want it. Well, now you're being sensible, Knife. I'll get the file for my saddlebag and go to work on that chain. It was nearly daybreak the following morning when Knife and his companions reached the rim of the canyon above Thief River. Still wearing the iron strap from which the ball and chain had been filed, Knife Jackson drove the wagon while Ricks and Adobe rode alongside. In the back of the light vehicle, Deputy McCool had succeeded in loosening the ropes about his wrists. He was about to remove them when Knife halted abruptly. Oh, hold it, hold it, hold it. Any help, Knife? No, thanks. This is a job I aim to take care of myself. McCool, we're right above Thief River. I'll cut the ropes around your ankles so you can walk to the edge. <laughs> you can't even call for help with that gag across your mouth. Yeah. I thought Thief River Trail ran along the bank of the river. Yeah, it does. But you can't see it from here because of an overhang. It's a long drop to the river. <laughs> yeah, the longer the better. All right, McCool, your anchors are free. Get out of the wagon and walk to the edge. Pete McCool's mind was racing. He could have freed his hands from the ropes that were loose on his wrists, but without a gun, he was helpless against three armed killers. Jackson's weapon was already drawn, and as Pete walked stiffly toward the rim of the ledge, Knife pointed the weapon at his back. That's far enough, McCool. Pete stood still for a moment, looking down at the river. He realized he had only one chance to escape death. He was about to jump over the edge when Knife fired. The bullet struck him in the back as he went over the ledge. You got him, Knife. I swore I'd kill him for capturing me. That takes care of the only witness who could identify as Rex. That's right. Now, all we've got to worry about is this iron strap on my ankle. Anyone who sees it will know I busted out of jail. We'll figure a way to get rid of it, Knife. Well, steady, boy. Now, let's clear out of here. Now, where's this trail lead? Well, to the hills above the town of Sharpsville. And let's get going. Get up, get up, get up. Get up. Get up. Deputy Pete McCool was not dead, but his strength was ebbing. As soon as he hit the water, he freed his hands from the loose ropes about his wrist, and then he pulled the gag from his mouth. He tried to reach shore, but the bullet wound in his back and the cramped condition of his muscles made swimming almost impossible. It was all he could do to stay afloat. Help! Help! He called for help, but even as he shouted, he had little hope that anyone would hear him. Help! Help! 
The Lone Ranger and Tonto were camped a short distance from the river's edge. At the sound of the gunshot, the masked man had thrown aside his blanket. Tonto, that shot sounded as if it were fired by someone on the rim of the canyon. Not what me think, Kimasabi. Listen. Someone called for help. Come on, Tonto. We go to the river's edge. Ah. The Lone Ranger and Tonto saw Pete when they drew rein at the river's edge. Is he steady, big fella? Here. Take my guns, Tonto. I'll go in after him. Uh-huh. An instant later, the masked man was in the water. In a short time, he reached Pete's side. He grabbed the deputy and started back toward shore. But before they reached it, the wounded man lost consciousness. At the water's edge, Tonto was waiting to help the Lone Ranger. Thanks, Toto. Him, him alive? Yes, but he's unconscious. Ah. Him have bullet wound in back. Hit in the shoulder. Oh, he's wearing a badge. Let me see it. The deputy sheriff's badge. We'll take him to camp and bandage his wound. It was an hour later when Pete McCool regained consciousness. His clothing had been dried by a campfire. But at first, he wasn't aware of that. He saw the masked man, blinked unbelievingly, and muttered, Um, What the... Steady, take it easy. We're friends. Where am I? In our camp, a short distance from Thief River Trail. You... You must have hauled me out of the river. That's right, McCool. Uh, Here. You drink this. Maybe feel better. Thanks. Thanks, Injun. How did you know my name? I found your credentials in your pocket. What are you going to do with me? I help you as much as possible. Yeah. Why? This mask doesn't mean I'm an outlaw. No, I reckon you wouldn't be willing to help a lawman if you were on the dodge. You bandaged my wound. Toto took care of it. Now, uh, who shot you? A no-good killer named Knife Jackson got me. Jackson's in jail in Unity. Yeah, he was. A couple of his friends busted him out. They took me with them when they made their getaway. Pete McCool told the Lone Ranger and Tonto about the jailbreak and what he had overheard while traveling in the back of the wagon. Jackson swore he'd break out of jail, so the sheriff and I put a leg iron on him just to make sure he wouldn't. But that didn't stop him. It must have slowed him down. Yeah. But Rick Roscoe took care of that. He filed the chain. Is Jackson still wearing the iron strap around his ankle? Yeah. I see. But McCool, you'll need a doctor's attention. But Jackson and his pal... I'll try to pick up their trail while Toto takes you to the doctor in Sharpsville. I have no horse. A scout. Carry double. You'll be able to stay in the saddle until you reach town. But it's my job to go after those crooks. They'd shoot you on sight. Uh, Furthermore, you've been too seriously wounded to be able to handle a gun. Ah. It better you do what Lone Ranger say. Lone Ranger? Did you say the Lone Ranger? Not right. Are you the Lone Ranger? Yes. Mister, I'll I'll believe you. The bullets in your gun belt are silver. All right. See for yourself. Here. Yeah, they, they are silver. Great day... And to think I figured I'd fallen in with a couple of owl hoots. <laughs> My luck has changed for the better. And as far as Knife Jackson, I'd say his luck has run out. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes... Please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Tale to continue. Tonto and the deputy left the Lone Ranger and headed for the town of Sharpsville. They were forced to travel slowly because of McCool's wound. And as they rode, the Indian studied the sky. What's wrong, Tonto? You look at sky. It rained plenty hard soon. I hope it doesn't start before we reach town. Now me think of mask friend. If rain come, wash away tracks and wagon. Oh, doggone, I hadn't thought of that. You lose Knife's trail. Ah, uh, put him up, Scout. Meanwhile, Knife Jackson and his two companions had halted the wagon in front of a large cave where they ate a hot meal for the first time since the jailbreak. When they had finished eating, Rick said, Well, that's the last of our supplies, Dobie. We'll ride to town and get some more, Rick. Who'll ride to town? Rick and I. What about me? You'll stay here till we come back, Knife. Nothing to him. I've got to get this iron strap off my ankle. You want to ride in a town where folks will see it and know you're an escape prisoner? Blacksmith could get it off. So could we if we had a cold chisel and a hammer. Then get him and bring him back here. That's what we plan to do. Uh, come on, Dobie. Yeah, right. Steady, boy. Come on, get in there. With his back resting against a boulder, Knife Jackson watched his friends mount and ride away. The overcast sky reflected his own gloomy mood. The escape killer frowned as he considered his predicament. Though Ricks and Adobe had broken him out of jail, neither one showed him the respect he felt his reputation deserved. Uh, they're thinking of their own hides. And they probably figure to collect plenty as soon as I get some cash again. The thought of money brought a darker frown to Knife's face, for he had none and no immediate prospect of getting any. He stared in gloomy disapproval at the two dun-colored horses that had been hitched to the wagon. Uh, neither of them make a good saddle horse. But I reckon I'll have to ride one till I can get something better. The <laughs> iron strap around Knife's boot scraped against a rock as he rose to his feet to stare downhill at his departing friend. Uh, the strap! The sound rowled the outlaw's already frayed nerves. He kicked the rock viciously, then paced restlessly in front of the cave. Ricks and Adobe bought supplies in the general store in Sharpsville. Then they went to the blacksmith shop where they purchased a hammer and a cold chisel. As they were about to leave the shop, a storm broke. They stood in the doorway for a moment. Uh, there it is, Adobe. When I saw those clouds this morning, I knew we'd get rain. You want to stay in town till it's over or start back the hill? Why shouldn't we stay here? Well, knives at the cave waiting for us. Let him wait. I... Don't be look. Huh? There's an engine coming this way, and look who's riding with him. She's a deputy. McCool. He's alive. Get back inside so he can't see us. Knife didn't kill him. McCool can identify us. He's likely to telegraph our description to every peace officer in this part of the country. The law will be looking for us as well as Jackson. Let's see where the engine's taking him. Yeah, I'm with you. If we move fast, we'll be able to keep him inside. Hey, Riggs, I can shoot that deputy from here. Use your head, Dobie. There's too many people around for witnesses. We never get out of town alive. Yeah, but we've got to get rid of him before he talks. I've managed to stay off handbills this long, and I'm not risking being hunted now. But take it easy. We might be able to get in the cold without being seen. Uh, the Redskins stopped at that house at the edge of town. Yeah, there's a sign in front of it. Well, at least it's not the sheriff's office. We we'll move closer and wait for a chance to gun the deputy. What about the Redskin? If we have to, we'll shoot him too. Tonto had stopped in front of the doctor's house. When the wounded deputy was safely inside, Doc Barton said, Man, you're soaked to the skin. I'll get blankets and something hot for you to drink. We were so close to town when the storm broke, we... We figured it'd be better to keep going than stop. I'll examine your wounds and then I... Hey, where's the Indian who brought you here? He's gone for the sheriff. I want to turn in a report about an escaped killer and his two pals. Ricks and Adobe had reached the side of the doctor's house when they heard the door open. They hugged the wall of the building to avoid being seen. Someone left the house, Adobe. Who is it? I don't know. I can't see who it... 
Hey, now I see him. It's a redskin. Is not cool with him? No. I reckon he's still inside. You go around the back and take him by surprise. Tuttle found the sheriff inspecting some gear in a saddle shed behind his office. In a few words, the Indian explained that Deputy Pete McCool was at the doctor's house. When he heard that McCool had been wounded, Sheriff Alt said, We'll get over to Doc's place right away. I want to get a statement from McCool while he's still able to talk. The sheriff strode from the shed with Toto at his heels. The lawman had chosen the shortest route to Doc Barton's house. He passed the back door of the cafe and was approaching the rear of the doctor's house when Toto saw two men cautiously opening the doctor's door. It looks like Doc's got two more patients. Ah. Them fella draw guns. You're right. Come on, Tonto. We'll get him before they start trouble. Ah. Ricks and Adobe were crossing the kitchen when the door opened behind hey, them. Hey, what the... It's a And the sheriff. Who are you? What's the idea of busting into Doc's place with your guns drawn? Well, we... Uh, I, uh... Hey, boys. I'd know it anywhere. Yeah, who's that? That deputy, McCool. Adobe, I'll get you. Take it easy. We've already got him, McCool. Take your guns, Tonto. Uh, me guns. Now, wait a minute. Listen, Sheriff. I'll get... listen to you two after I hear what Deputy McCool has to say. Keep your hands up. Uh, me got guns, Sheriff. Good. Now, walk ahead of us to the doctor's office and don't try any foolish moves. Meanwhile, in the hills above town, the Lone Ranger had tried to cover as much ground as possible before the rain washed out the wagon tracks. When at length the wheel marks disappeared, he was only a short distance from the cave that sheltered Knife Jackson. The masked man knew the cave was ahead. He intended to go there, change to dry clothing, and wait out the storm. As he approached the cave, he saw the wagon outside and stopped abruptly. Oh, oh easy, Mr. Big Fellow. Inside the cave, Knife Jackson had been waiting impatiently for Ricks and Adobe to return from town. He was standing just inside the entrance, watching the trail, when he saw the masked man coming. A glance at Silver was all the escaped killer needed. Why, there's the finest saddle horse I ever saw. Here was a chance to get a magnificent horse and whatever loot the masked man carried. For Knife was sure that the newcomer was an outlaw like himself. He drew his gun. Then suddenly, the stranger stopped. Knife realized that he had seen the wagon and was about to seek cover. He shouted, You there! You're covered! Inside the cave. Get your hands up and move this way. That's it. Bring your horse with you. Step inside, mister. Thanks. Well, what are you looking at? Your knife, Jackson. Ah, you know me, huh? Yes, I know you. I've seen your face on handbills. Yeah, not seeing me at my best. It was a time when I rode good horses and carried plenty of cash. Thanks to you, I'll be on top of the world again. Oh, what do you mean? I'm taking your horse, likewise your guns and whatever cash you're carrying. You haven't questioned my mask. Why should I? We're both dodging the law. Unbuckle your gun belt and drop it to the ground. Knife held his weapon steady. The Lone Ranger looked about the cave for Ricks and Adobe. When he saw that he and the escaped killer were the only ones in the cavern, he dropped his hands as if to obey the outlaw's order. But suddenly he threw himself aside and shouted, Take him, Silver! <laughs> the stallion charged the killer, throwing him off balance. He fired as he fell, but his shot struck the ceiling. Before he could shoot again, the Lone Ranger's Colts were in his hands. A silver bullet smashed Knife's revolver. All right, Silver. Steady, big fella. Oh, my You're not hurt. On your feet. You smashed my gun. That's right. That, that horse, if he hadn't charged You're me... You're lucky you didn't try to mount him. All right, mister, I gambled and I lost. What are you going to do about it? Take you into Sharpsville and turn you over to the sheriff. Sheriff? You turn me over to the sheriff? <laughs> try that and he'll put both of us in jail. You may be surprised. You're the one who's due for a surprise, mister. I'll go with you, but I'm warning you, I have friends. They're on the way back from town right now. We'll probably meet them on the trail. And when we do, they'll kill you. I'll take that chance. Get going.
As the Lone Ranger and Knight Jackson left the cave, the rain stopped. The ground was treacherous underfoot, and Knight was traveling on one of the wagon horses. He was forced to ride bareback, but his discomfort was lessened by the anticipation of meeting Ricks and Dolby. The Lone Ranger kept a sharp watch for the killer's friends. Suddenly, he heard hoofs approaching. There they are. My friends are coming. Go sure rain, Jackson. Hold, 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 hold. 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 Rick, Sylvie, help. Give me a hand. The masked man's got a gun on me. Keep it coming. Huddle. Hold, hold, hold hold. Well, Knife, you made a mistake. He brings Sheriff Alt. Knife Jackson was expecting to meet friends. His friends are in jail. Jail? Ricks and Doby? That's right, Jackson. And to save their hides, they told us where to find you. Tonto told me his masked friend was on your trail, but I didn't figure he'd already have you in custody. Jackson escaped from jail in unity, Sheriff. I know, mister. Deputy McCool told me the story. McCool's dead. Your bullet didn't kill him, Jackson. Well, uh, how'd he get out of the river? This masked man hauled him out. McCool's in town right now waiting for me to bring you in. <laughs> Put out your hands, Jackson. From now on, you're wearing handcuffs. Will you need help to take Jackson to town, Sheriff? Nope. With these cuffs on him, he'll not be able to make trouble. Then, adios, Sheriff. Uh, so long and thanks, mister. Adios, Tonto. Adios, Sheriff. Monsieur! Uh, let's come. Sheriff, you're letting that masked man get away. Why not, Jackson? But he's a crook. He's dodging the law. Deputy he... McCool told me all about him, Knife. <laughs> Fact is, McCool will probably spend the rest of his life bragging that he knows the Lone Ranger. This is a feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Uh -huh.